performing well on whiteboard interviews isn't good enough if you want to break into the fields of autonomy, machine learning, computer vision, or artificial intelligence. If you want to get into one of these fields, you'll need to demonstrate your technical expertise and that you can, are able to solve problems with non-trivial solutions or unique problems that might have never been solved before. The Mars Challenge is an interview type of project proposed by Mars Auto that allows you to demonstrate your technical expertise and what, whether you have what it takes to succeed in one of these fields. The Mars Challenge simply involves estimating the speed of an ego vehicle using nothing but camera frames from a camera that's mounted on this vehicle. In this video, we will attempt a simple solution to this challenge using camera motion compensation to, tra to get a transformation matrix that will use as training data to then regress the camera ego speed. So let's get started. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to download the data. We have a training video and a test video. And to accompany the training video, we have a training speeds, which is just a one column text file with vehicle speeds at every frame. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this training speed and we're actually going to filter it. I have another video that shows how exactly we filter it and why we go through why we have all these things in here, why we're using an acceleration model, even though we only have speed. I encourage you to watch it if you have any questions. In this video, I'm just gonna go over the basic usage, which is down here. We simply make the common filter object and filter the data. So what the filtering does is it gives us a better quality of data when we have our, our data right here, we can see that the original data is going to have stair-steppy artifacts that are not actually there. They're just artifacts of the measurement system. So in this case, we want to smooth those out and get more realistic data. So let's just plot these real quick and you'll be able to hopefully see. Uh, maybe we go to 1700 and I'll show you these stair-steppy artifacts. We'll try to get a closer zoom. So you can see the stair steppy artifact, and in this filtered data right here on the second that's overlaid over it, we actually just go straight down. So that, that's the reason why we filter it. So I'm going to go on and move on to the next part, which is how to collect these transformation matrix. So I have another video on camera motion compensation that shows us how to make an affine transformation from frame one to frame two that basically makes frame one align itself with frame two. So the basic outline of how we're going to do this is we're going to compute feature points on frame one. We're going to find the corresponding features on frame two, and then we're going to estimate the 2D transformation matrix on both frames. We're going to do this in three different methods and try to get the best one. First, we're going to use the fast feature detector. We're going to use Shi Tomasi and we're going to use ORB. These are three techniques implemented at OpenCV that will allow us to do this. So for FAST and Shitamasi, we can actually use optical flow to get the features on the second frame, while we only compute the features on the first frame. And then once we have the previous and current features that are matched up, we can use these to estimate the partial and fine transformation matrix from frame one to frame two, which we call A. In the second one, we have ORB. In this case, ORB, we need to detect features on both frames, and then we use the FLAN K nearest neighbors matcher to get the matches. And then once we get the matches, we can get previous and current points on frame one and frame two and compute the transformation matrix. And once again, if you have more questions or are interested, I have a whole video on this that goes over how to compute the transformation matrix. And it particularly focuses on FAST and Shitamasi. So we could do our speed test right here. I'm just getting some samples from our training video. I'm going to get two frames right here. And I'm going to get parameters for each of these. This is for FAST and Shitamasi. And these are the ORB and FLAN objects that we're going to go to our other way of detecting 
features. So for the fast implementation, we get about 58 milliseconds, 35 milliseconds for sheet to mossy, and 208 milliseconds for orb. Now it should be noted that fast is the fastest way to detect features, but Shita Masi, even though it doesn't work as fast, actually gives us a faster method of estimating this transformation matrix A. And let's go down below to see why this is the case. So this is the case because with the fast, we actually get 1,600 features, and the Shita Masi, we get 800, and for the orb, we get 1,500. So let's plot these and see what it actually looks like. So you can see in fast right here, we get a bunch of features, but they're not quite evenly spread like Shitamasi. And in fact, if we look at this right here, we're actually missing a lot of major features on this stripe right here. There's four obvious corners right here, but fast doesn't detect it with the settings that we've given it. Shitamasi, on the other hand, easily detects this, and it also has a nice even distribution throughout the image. Orb, on the other hand, does not have a nice even distribution and only seems to get features in a small subset of the total image. So even though we could actually tune fast to be not necessarily faster, but to give us more features, it doesn't necessarily make it better. And in fact, there should be a trade-off noted in here that the more features we're able to detect, the better we're able to estimate the fine transformation matrix. But however, the more features we have, the slower the estimation will be. And since we're dealing with autonomy, we're gonna want something that's more real time. So we have this different image right here. I'm actually not sure how that happened, but different image. And you can see that Fast gives us 5,000 features, and right here we have just about everything, but we have a significantly higher overhead than Shita Masi. So for this reason, we're gonna go with Shita Masi, and we're gonna go ahead and end this video here since it's getting too long. And the next video, we're gonna go over the actual approach to collecting the data for each video, and we're gonna go over the approach to how to train models and so to to predict the vehicle speed. And we're gonna select the model that actually predicts vehicle speed and make a video. So this is what the video is gonna look like. You can see that roughly the true speed is similar to the filtered speed and the predicted speed is gonna be generally a little bit off. So this is the common filter that we, that we use to actually filter the training data and the true speed is the common filtered training data. So that being said, I'll see you in the next one.